Hi, good afternoon, Gabby. And for everybody that's watching, this is Gabby Walsh. She has got a fantastic Facebook group called Mothers with ADHD and also another, um, not another business, but part of that business is La Femme Focus. Welcome to Accidentally Awesome, Gabby. How are you? Good, thank you. How are you? Yes, I'm really good, thanks. You haven't been very well, so I'm glad to see that you're feeling a bit better. Absolutely, yes, I'm, I'm feeling much better. I think just um, a bit overdone on everything, as, as we all do. We all kind of like want to do one time. So Just want to do all the things, don't we? Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's, that's not just mum life, that's ADHD life. And when you put them both together, it can be exhausting. Oh, wow. Yes. And that's exactly why I've started La Femme Focus and specifically um, focusing on supporting mothers with ADHD because it's a whole demographic of, of people with ADHD and neurodiversities that's really under-supportive, under-supported yes. rather, and misunderstood. And um, and so many women yeah. our age are only just starting to find out that they've got ADHD as well. So I think support groups and, you know, whatever way you want to put it, facilities that are here for us, they're severely lacking, aren't they? Oh, absolutely. And it's amazing. I actually thought, oh, I'll, I'll join up myself to find a, a Mothers with ADHD Facebook group. Mm. And I couldn't find any that was specific to mothers. And yeah. you kind of, whilst, whilst, yes, there's support and information for women with ADHD, motherhood is a whole other level. And um, mm -hmm. the way I explain it is that motherhood is really ADHD unfriendly because motherhood... Yes requires us to basically call on all of our executive functions that are impaired so the whole mm -hmm. you know society today still is that um, the women are the main caregiver and the manager of the household and exactly. you know it, how are we supposed to create structure for everybody else when we're the ones that actually need the structures put in place so it's so true um, that's why I'm yeah, that's why I'm sort of shining such a light on on this because um, I've also found like in my conversations with um, women who are finding out that they've got ADHD or think that they do because they're having um, conversations with their child's psychiatrist or psychologist or, or you know, OT um, about their children's um, ADHD. That, and that's how I found out, yeah. My yeah. son was first to be diagnosed, so he's... Um, autistic with ADD and when we were doing his um, ADHD diagnosis I was like looking at the questions going no 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 but Ayla my daughter yes 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 so he got diagnosed then she got diagnosed then I read up about it how it presents in girls and women and I was like oh hang on a minute that's me too so how yeah. how did um is that how you realised that you might have this or were you diagnosed in a different way? I was diagnosed in a different way um, and I'm really fortunate for this. So when I was about eight or nine, I think it was, my my brother went to go get diagnosed for ADHD and my mum took the initiative to get me looked at as well mm -hmm. by a neurologist in Sydney. Mm -hmm. um, and I was diagnosed with ADD. Uh, back in those days yeah. um, and essentially my experience has been all right you've got ADHD here's some medication and it was just my medication was just managed through school my teachers weren't aware of it my friends weren't really aware of it mm -hmm. I was just kind of told to hide my medication in my drink bottles mainly because my parents were worried about what everybody else would think and yeah. they didn't want me to be differently so yes. that's not on any fault of theirs. Um, no, so I because never really... back then, I guess, you know, we still have, there's still a lot of shame and a lot of stigma attached to having ADHD now, um, which is one my of the reasons, you know, my we're probably doesn't doing this. Like Your dad doesn't? No, wow. even, even when I held my workshop last week and like, you know, this is because of the information that has been brought up as, 
you know, we were going through this mm-hmm. in his mind or his understanding quite outdated is that it only happens in boys, young boys, and you grow out of it. And yeah. it, that could not be more further from the truth. So mm, exactly. Um, so continuing on, I went through school um, and I went actually went through uni without being medicated because I left at 18, went to uni and it kind of all fell on the wayside. I was really lucky that I was in a course that had me really creatively engaged being an interior mm-hmm. designer. Um, so got through that quite successfully and, and have since had a 14 year long career as an interior designer. Mm-hmm. Um, but then in just at the end of 2018, um, my husband and I were having marital issues where my memory was actually becoming a really big issue for us. Uh-huh. Um, and I, I didn't realize that my inability to remember simple things was actually impacting my husband really negatively, um, right. making him feel like he wasn't worthy or valued, um, that nothing that he was doing mattered because I didn't remember what he was doing. Um, right, it was that bad. Yeah, it was really bad. Oh. Uh, it was really bad, unfortunately. Um, you know, we love each other so much. So f- for us, we recognised what was going on. Not that mm-hmm. it was ADHD, but... That we needed but there was an issue with something. you mm-hmm. and um I went to see my counselor and she was the one that said oh do you think maybe it's your ADHD and I kind of went what are you talking about because <laughs> I'd only said it in very very random passing like yeah. maybe because I was talkative I think I said oh don't worry I'm just ADHD kind of thing mm-hmm. um and it took me on this journey to really actually understand what that meant to have ADHD because i just thought maybe it was my inability to pay attention that's what I thought it was Mm -hmm. but that is ADHD it's a tiny little part of it but it still is part of ADHD something that I'm understanding is that it's not so much an attention deficit disorder it's that we actually pay attention to everything Mm -hmm. so we can't regulate our attention Mm -hmm. and we can't regulate our um, cognitive function and our executive functions so going on this journey of discovery I went to a neuropsychologist had an EEG um, scan done again Uh and there kind of recognized not only did I have ADHD but there there was some kind of brain trauma there um, that yeah and it kind of made me readdress my childhood and and emotional trauma and things like that and Mm -hmm. to be honest Rather than feeling relief around being re-diagnosed with ADHD, I was one of those people that regressed. And um, I understand now that that can be quite normal for women yeah. to regress after any sort of diagnosis. Um, and it made me uh, depressed. And, um, yeah, I got into this hole where I thought, oh, you know, what's wrong with me? Why am I, why am I like this? I'm, mm-hmm. I'm broken. I, you know, who am I now? I don't know who I am anymore. Um, and I think like that's also a cycle of motherhood as well. Like, yeah, so I think it all compounded true. for me. So at this and point, did you have a child? Yes. So I had a, a, at that point, she would have been three, just after th- maybe three, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and I realised that I'd actually had undiagnosed postnatal as well. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of that stems from actually my ADHD and rejection sensitive dysmorphia that comes yep. quite often with women with ADHD mm-hmm. so my internal dialogue was so bad that it got to a point where I you know sat on my back deck after I'd forgotten something again and you know felt so much shame and guilt around that and I was squeezing my fingers so hard into my into my hands and I was trying so hard to convince myself not to hit myself in the face mm-hmm. like I was that trapped and growing up with a mother with um, borderline personality disorder, I knew straight away that that was not that was not behaviour that could go on anymore. Yeah. Um, yeah. So after that, I really worked on myself and did a lot of focus around self healing. And because of self healing, a big part of that is actually educating yourself on your neurodiversities. Mm-hmm. And so it just made sense. It was just like this veil lifted off my eyes and suddenly I realized that all these things that I thought were character flaws were actually underlying symptoms of ADHD yes Mm -hmm. and it was freeing and 
I feel like from my experience a few years ago, I really up leveled myself and learned to work with my neurodiversities. And that's what I really want to help other mothers with neurodiversities explore. So yeah, yeah that's what and I, I do think you can, only, with you can only really do that once you've came out the other side though. Um, I remember years ago I had a stomach issue and I was working in a corporate role at the time and I'd said to the receptionist about this she was like a mother figure you know she she wanted to look after everybody and um, she said to me she says well you know what the best thing you can do is own it own it you have this issue find out everything you can about it Ed, like you say educate yourself and then it won't own you and absolutely I've, I've been That's like nice. that with with any problems that I've had since any you know health issues mental or physical I'm like right I own you the only way I can own you is like you say by educating myself by learning more by with mental health I guess it could it's being introspective isn't it it's looking at things yeah. your behaviors what happens how you react um, so this has all been quite positive for you in some in one way that it's led you on to helping other mothers. Now you mentioned a, a workshop that you did. Can you tell us a little bit more about what that was about? Absolutely. So I've been working on um, creating workshops for mothers with ADHD, mainly based around self awareness and educating themselves on ADHD. So I, it's a two hour online workshop that I've I've started where we mm -hmm. run through what ADHD is and really simple explanations and why it's so important to understand it in relation to not only yourself but motherhood as well mm -hmm. so it's much more of a self-awareness exercise that we go through because mm -hmm. self-awareness is the first step to growth um, yes. and also you know self -awareness within your ADHD and how that manifests um, and then the um, final part of it is an introduction to how you can turn your symptoms into strengths of yours. Mm -hmm. um, so if I was to give you an example, um, being talkative for me has always, you know, at school it was, um, you know, Gabrielle's too talkative. You know, it was always seen as a negative thing, which has had negative mental impacts. Mm -hmm. But now I see it as an absolute and can create really meaningful conversations because I'm talkative and because I'm an oversharer. Mm -hmm. So it's really, um, you know, fun last week and it was a really good group of women that just suddenly felt less alone in their journey and mm -hmm. they had reason to feel so overwhelmed by motherhood and ADHD and sensory overload. And to them at the end of the workshop, they just said, it is just so nice to finally meet other women that know what I'm going through and I don't feel so alone anymore and I feel hurt and seen. And for me, it was just such an emotional build-up because it was I like, bet. yes, this is create. I want to create a courageous group of women, like a courageous yes. community of women that don't let their neurodiversities own them. Exactly. They own their diversities yeah. and they see them as assets rather than as hindrance. Exactly. And I'm all for finding, like you say, it's what somebody might see as a weakness can turn into a strength. Our, our talkative natures, um, you've put that to good use by doing the workshop. I write for a magazine, so I have to interview people like, like I'm doing here, but it's written. And um, yeah, I get such great feedback from the people that I interview because I seem to manage to be able to draw out these little nuggets about themselves yeah. and you know I just seem to put that down on paper in a really good way but I think without that um ability to just chatter away and make people feel comfortable and relaxed I wouldn't get half as good an interview as as other people might um so I I agree with you there you should always and I think it's 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 also being comfortable in your own skin as well and finding a role that suits your strengths. So, you know, if I was meant to be doing something else that talking wasn't exactly a good thing, then, you know, I'd have to change that around. So with, with your diagnosis, you said that you had medication when you were younger. Um, are you using medication now or are you, are you preferring to use the whole skills side of it or do you have a combination of both? 
I definitely am medicated now. And uh, if I'm honest with you, if probably, so I wasn't medicated obviously during my pregnancy or mm-hmm. um, breastfeeding. And before that, I was only like I'd organized with my psychiatrist only to take medication when I felt I needed it. Um, yeah. I actually found that it held me back at work more than anything because I realized that my work needed me to be all over the place and multi focused mm-hmm. um, and creative and, and, you know, outgoing. Um, yeah. Not that medication doesn't make you creative or outgoing, but it, it kind of it the changes way that it, doesn't it? Started, it puts a blanket over um, over all of your attention. So you really hyper-focus mm-hmm. even more. Um, I found that I, yeah. as well. Mm-hmm. I've only just started also, like, getting medication and I've found it quite strange at times that, that you aren't this flowing creativity isn't as, as much. It's like you say, it's more a directive, directed creativity, which is, quite odd yeah it it is it's really I think my creativity is where I see it the most it doesn't make Mm -hmm. me less creative but it really focuses my creativity yeah Um, which when I really need to buckle down and get something done it's amazing Mm -hmm. Um, but it's only been recently uh, that I've actually started taking it regularly and daily and have Mm -hmm. minimized dose a lot so I realized the difference between for me, taking five milligrams and 10 milligrams was quite significant. 10 milligrams mm-hmm. made me like, you know, I've yes. had too much caffeine. Yes, Whereas five I've had that experience. Five milligrams has made me feel normal, which is mm-hmm. amazing. Um, yes. I feel like I'm in a really good place on my medication journey because it just really helps me to process the world around me so much clearer. For me, um, it calms all the, not the crazy thoughts, but the huge number of thoughts that are going through my head. Um, it makes yeah. things quiet. That's the best way I can describe it. Does it do something like that for you when you're taking it? Definitely. Um, because when I'm, when I, I guess the thing with ADHD and what I was saying before is that it's not so much an attempt attention deficit it's that you're paying attention to too many things at mm-hmm. once yeah which is actually what makes us really um, lateral thinkers because we're focusing on details that other people might not be aware of yeah um so what the medication does for me is it, it like I said it puts that blanket on that um I guess peripheral vision um, mm-hmm. of my mind it allows me just like you know for example just to have a conversation now rather than mm-hmm. thinking mind oh my god what time is it do I have to pick up my kids oh I haven't done the yes, laundry <laughs> exactly I almost forgot to take my afternoon dose I'm great at taking my morning because I'm on a short acting one um I'm great at taking my morning because I'm taking mine I'm giving my kids their things and it's all good but come lunchtime trying to remember to actually do it I, I don't always um yeah. and then I, I'd got up to do something and completely forgot what I'd got got to do <laughs> before I got to the door <laughs> And then I came and sat down again and then I was like, what was it? Right, think about it. And I was like, oh, it was my medication. So I quickly went and got it before we were going to start this because I thought if I don't, I'm not going to be able to concentrate on what we're yeah. chatting about. My so, uh, Fitbit best friend because it's uh, got a vibration on it. So I put all my... All um, your calendar stuff in there. Yeah, yeah my mind is on that. My watch strap has broken at the moment. Oh. <laughs> I need to go and get a new one. <laughs> um, so you mentioned as well as doing the workshops for mothers that you're an interior designer and you're, you're talking about how this has affected, um, taking your medication has affected your job. Um, do you think that ADHD, it, you're, obviously it's helping, it, you're a very creative person. So you, do you think your ADHD has meant that having such a creative role is the perfect sort of job for you? Absolutely. So, being an inter- so I'm an interior designer in a commercial, like a large scale architectural practice. So, um, my interior design is much more um, focused along the lines of project management and client relationships. And you know, design is definitely a factor in that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I find that um, because I've had to mask a lot of my symptoms over the years, mm-hmm. um, you know, I. 
I'm really good at communication at my work because if I don't do it that second, I'll forget about it. So mm-hmm. if I get an email straight away because if I don't, it won't get done. So I've had mm-hmm. to sort of create tools around it. But what where ADHD has really helped me excel in my career is that I'm fantastic at problem solving. And yes. That is a key asset of anyone with ADHD is that we have that ability to Uh think think laterally. So some um, issue comes up last minute, you can be like that and on the ball. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not even like sitting there thinking too hard about it. It's like, oh, it comes naturally. Yeah. So um, I think I owe my ADHD to a really successful career. Um, Yeah. Because, yeah, the main key th- things about being an interior designer are creativity and problem solving. That's like mm-hmm. all I do all day. I suppose so, yes. I mean, uh, there's a lady that I'm wanting to get on um, the channel called Sarah, and she's a um, professional organiser. So she has to do that sort of idea as well. So she's a problem solver. She has to go in and look at the space, find out what her client is needing it for, and then help them figure out how to solve that problem, which I guess is very similar to what you do. Um, so hopefully we'll get Sarah on as well, which would be fun. Um, be awesome. It would, wouldn't it? Um, so we are called Accidentally Awesome, as you know. Um, and while there is rubbish that goes along with this, um, you know, I'm dealing with it with my daughter at the moment. She's really struggling at school. I tell them it's awesome. It's a superpower. And you're obviously in the same sort of frame of mind as me. So as well as your creativity and problem solving, what sort of things do you think ADHD has given you? Definitely my ability to connect with people. Um, Mm -hmm. Because I'm an oversharer, um, which not many realise is actually, you know, part of ADHD. Very much Because I'm an oversharer. people get to know me very quickly and feel comfortable in sharing their stories. Mm-hmm. So just always been able to connect on a really authentic, deep level with people. And, um, yeah, and I think that's, you know, that's why I've started La Femme Focus as well is because it's actually, to be honest, it started because I was in that hole and I sat down and I said, you know, you know, what do I actually want out of life? I, you know, I, I want to do something that fulfills my soul. That's a um, an outlet for my heart. As you know, not just you know, create, being creative and interior designer is an outlet for my brain, but I want something mm-hmm. that's an outlet for my heart. And so I wrote down all the things that I was good at, um, and you know, it was like creating connections and being creative and problem solving. And out of mm-hmm. all those tributes of ADHD came La Femme Focus. So um, yeah, yeah. And I think that's another huge thing with ADHD, that we are entrepreneurs. We can see opportunities out there. We can see the gaps that need to be filled. And I think we're we're really good at getting out there and doing it because um, I think a lot of us are very fearless in that way. Um, We've either seen so far ahead that it doesn't bother us or we just don't care and we're focusing on what we're doing. (laughs) So I, I think that a lot of us are very good in that sort of situation where we can just get on with it and do it and not be worried about it yeah and that's that's why I'm doing what I'm doing because I want women to understand that you know they have this amazing brain that they really should love and appreciate and all it takes is firstly understanding that brain and secondly working with the people around you to create structure and systems that actually allow you to excel yes um you know my husband's amazing and he knows that like when I'm working Tuesday to Thursday that I have an inability to actually do anything beyond work so Mm -hmm. I'll come home and and clean and you know he really he really manages the systems in our household and um, you know that allows me to be a great mum and you know Mm -hmm. I think that that's really important is being able to he turned around to me once when we were um, having an argument back in the day and mm-hmm. he said I don't know how to help you how can I help you and I said to him I don't even know how to help myself <laughs> I understand that feeling yeah because I mean yeah, like I'm, I'm nearly 50 and I've only just found out that I've got this 
And I've been seeing therapists and counsellors and psychiatrists and psychologists since I was about 19. Yeah, and, wow. you know, it, it frustrates me that it's taken this long for me to actually find out. So, you know, I don't actually know what the point of telling you that was. I can't remember. Uh, I <laughs> telling that was our system is massively flawed. Mm. Um, story that my psychiatrist told me, and, and this kind of hits deep for a lot of people, is that he had taken on a new client that was in a, um, you know, a mental wellness hospital here, mm-hmm. and he had had, he's got quite acute bipolar, and he's been 20 years in lithium, which is a very heavy drug. Yeah. He told me that he assessed this man over a few weeks and realised that he was having mood swings with, like, you know, several a day. And he said, that's yeah. not bipolar. Bipolar is very predictable in yeah, how you... Yeah, it follows a pattern, doesn't it? And he said, I, I think that this guy's got ADHD. And he started treating him for the ADHD and he said that he saw a massive change. Yeah. And, it just shows you that you should continue hard. to fight for this. Absolutely. Advocate for yourself. And I have absolutely no doubt in my mind that my mum, who had borderline personality, had ADHD as well. That was yeah. untreated and undiagnosed. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, I think that I think that the more we talk about this, and the more we shout about it, and let people know we're not crazy, it does no. exist. And don't don't you dare tell me that you grow out of it and that it's just no. for young boys. It's all no. about hyperactivity because. It is so much more than that, and it frustrates me. Yeah, scientists and doctors aren't hearing the masses going. Hang on a minute, there's something out there that we're not actually educating ourselves properly on. Yeah, and I think they aren't educated properly on adult ADHD, especially for women, because it does present so differently. I'd said to my psychologist last year, after looking into this for myself, I think I've got ADHD. I think I should get assessed. And I could just see her looking at me thinking, this is just another one of your crazy ideas. And, you know, why are you even troubling yourself with this? Because she just was like, you don't have ADHD, Lorna. And I was like, I'm pretty sure that I do. And I'm making an appointment with a psychiatrist. And I did. And I do. And it's, you know, I've, I've said this so many times on these videos because it's such a source of frustration for me. It's like if you are seeing a counsellor or a therapist and you speak to them about something that you feel could be a potential diagnosis for you, I would think that they're duty bound to actually look into that a bit further for you or encourage you to look into it yourself. And, you know, and this is one of the reasons why I want to have these videos out here is to encourage women to advocate for themselves to Absolutely. not take no for an answer and keep pursuing it until they find an answer that's that actually seems right. You know, I was told Absolutely. I had depression, I've had postnatal depression, I had PTSD, and I, I don't doubt that I've had all of these things. Um, but not one person thought it was ADHD, probably because I'm so high functioning, you know, and I think a lot of women are in that position. We are absolutely, a lot of, especially mothers are high functioning because we have no choice but to mask those symptoms. Mm. We have to carry on. Society has always banged us on the head going, you have to be a good mother, you have to be a good Mm -hmm. wife, you have to be a good employee, you have to be fit, healthy, on the ball. It's such a lot of nonsense. Absolutely. And I think for me that becoming a mother is when the wheels fell off for me and I just couldn't cope anymore. Because I don't, we don't have family why. here, and that's why. And another thing is, ADHD is heavily influenced by hormonal fluctuations. Mm-hmm. So, especially in a lot older women who are going through many poor uh, pre-menopause, and menopause, yeah, ADHD is directly linked to the release of estrogen. Mm-hmm. So that's why a lot of women make comment that their medication doesn't work just before their cycle or during their cycle um that's why people say that their um symptoms get really bad just before mm-hmm. their cycle yes. there's just not enough research in this field and mm. oh my god 
I get all goosebumps and all. <laughs> I can you know, tell. I can tell. I think I'm going to have to have oh, you back on so we can talk about all of this oh, again. This is why I'm doing what I'm doing, Lorna, because I want to be that bridge between mothers with ADHD and the experts and professionals. Because if you don't have access to that expert and professional, then come mm-hmm. to me. I will guide you. I'll be your your mentor. I, I'm not going and to I'm the pretend same. I'm a counsellor no well neither of us are doctors or counsellors or therapists but we're living with this and I think that is just as good you know if you're living with something like that you have got hands-on experience of it so I've got one last question for you and it's got to be a quickie um what are your favorite ADHD (laughs) life hacks what gets you through uh, the day if you're having a struggle okay so the first one is the Fitbit with the Mm -hmm. um because mm-hmm. that really sort of draws in and I you know phone alarms after a while you just kind of get used yeah. to flicking them off but this forces you to address it mm-hmm. um, so number one and number two would be um oh I've got a few for me thought downloads so I've got something that I recommend to my clients called um digest the day um All and right. that's uh-huh. before you go to sleep get your journal out and just write down everything and anything because if there's one thing that we struggle with it's falling asleep and staying asleep I've actually got five tools so if you ever want to know oh well (laughs) maybe we'll have to have you back on because I think we've both got a lot to say about this so we're coming up to the end of our time um zoom is telling me we don't have much time left I'm afraid so thanks for being on I will put all the information where people can find you in the box below and thanks for being here thank you so much Lana seriously it's such a pleasure to meet you I'll speak to you soon bye-bye